We're going to start off today with Joaquin Ramirez. He is the president of the International Association of Wildland Fire, founder and principal consultant at Techno Silva, and professor of technologies on wildland fires with the University of Leon from Spain. In addition, we also have Jeff Marshall on, and he is the lead, or he leads the fire analyst group for California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection through CAL FIRE. For background on wildfire analyst and, mo and modeling work, Marshall and Ramirez will be presenting today, and I'm going to pass the presenter role to you now. Thanks, everybody. We're, uh, we're here in, in sunny Southern California. Um, we're going to share the presentation together with, with the incident management teams meeting today. Yeah, so a few years ago, uh, we went through an RFI squared process, which was a request for innovative information. And what we were looking for was a new modeling program. Uh, we realized very quickly that uh, some of the models that we had, either through WIFTUS or through uh, Behave Plus, they just weren't keeping up with what we were seeing in our fire environments, uh, along with just the speed that we were able to grab those models out of there. So we went through this process. Uh, we had a number of companies that applied and put in for it, and Silva rose to the very top uh, through a metrics that we had. And so we went through a proof of concept in 2019. Uh, in that proof of concept, we had uh, four counties that we went through, and we started doing a lot of modeling on that side. Within that proof of concept, we had the Kincaid fire and a number of other large campaign fires, um, and that helped validate uh, the models that uh, Dr. Ramirez had put together. Um, after the proof of concept, and it was a program and a modeling system that CAL FIRE wanted to move forward with, uh, we went into a contract and negotiation, and then we operationalized uh, WFA, Wildfire Analysts, and Technosilva. And that happened in late 2019. And then we rolled that out to all the units. Um, we had a massive education portion that went in there. There's a campus for training along with, we actually hired 22 um, RDS2s, which is research data uh, specialists. And that was to help to run the models in each one of the units. So that as individual fires uh, broke out in their units, they were able to be embedded within the ECCs, gather as much real-time data through the radios, uh, along with just be there involved with the local fuels and fire personnel to have an idea about what those fires uh, were doing in their unit at the time so they can continue calibrating those models. Yeah. So uh, the solution, it's compound of two functionalities uh, extended with an extra functionality that we'll see today. The first one, uh, we call it FARCAS, which is basically a dynamic wildfire risk analysis daily. It's based on supercomputing. Uh, we run about 150 million simulations every day, four days in advance, uh, to provide every three hours uh, what is the fire size mm -hmm. potential in the state of California, rate of spread of in all, all those individual 150 million fires, and several other fire behavior factors that helps uh, to set up preparedness uh, to identify in advance what potential hotspots in case of a fire starting. Uh, it's kind of a, if you think about this, it's like a kind of the typical uh, risk assessment that is done statically uh, with historical data, but done dynamically and in advance based on actual simulations. Uh, the other tool is the FARSIM, uh, which is the on-demand wildfire spread prediction that can be done both on mobile and on desktop. Um, one thing I will say is that the models behind this are enhanced versions of the actual approved models through NWCG coming from the Missoula Fire Lab and some other research institutions. So it's accepted uh, science and proven science just improve and make it operational. Um, I'll go through some slides on, uh, uh, about the integration, uh, about the capabilities. One thing that is huge is the integration with the dispatch system. So we want to provide uh, intel from the moment that the fire has been detected or put into the CAT system. So as soon as we have the fire in the system, that the information goes to a uh, uh, to a supercomputer that we run a um, uh, weather model. We have a wharf model that is two kilometers, uh, five days, which is uh, most most precise that, for example, the hair model. We have we use a fuels model that we update every year twice in California. We're using improving land fire and other existing models with LIDAR data, JEDI data. It's probably the most precise uh, fuel model that's been done at this scale. 
And then we start to integrate with other sources of data, right? For example, uh, in this slide, we can see the integration of the model with the FireGuard data. FireGuard is the information coming from the National Guard that is providing right now every 10 minutes information about the fire, uh, for the fire affected areas. All the fires are evaluated from the get-go uh, and all the simulations with an initial attack assessment value, very simple to communicate from one to five to the units on the field. Uh, we consider that the simulation is, is valuable for the analyst, but to transfer that information to the crews on the field, a simple scale of the difficulty of the uh, initial attack assessment, the expected fire behavior, or the terrain difficulty is valuable. And also the system provides automatic impact analysis calculations, including uh, population, houses with an also a, a proprietary model that was developed by Tecno Silva. Uh, the simulations are run in seconds. Basically, every simulation we get, it's basically it takes about from 10 to 30 seconds to get all these results. Uh, it's running, as I mentioned, enhanced versions of the Rothermel model, the Scott and Reinhardt crown model. Uh, all the, it's about 20 models already integrated with, uh, with improved versions of them. And provides all those results in a three-dimensional, actually for dimensional GIS environment, where you can integrate, again, integration is the magic word, all kinds of sources of data, like for example, tracking of the resources with the ABL, uh, tracking the operations from the incident mapping, uh, the incident mapping uh, coming from the incident, and also the impact analysis that we can see here. So we can have an estimate of when the uh, when uh, people or the buildings are going to be impacted with this fire. Inside the modeling, there are some advanced capabilities to not only assessing the that 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 uh, the potential of that fire, but also we can calibrate on the fly the simulations with observations of that fire. So we we include where the fire is right now, where the fire was expected to be the system can adjust the Rotherman model on the fly and provide accurate simulations for the next runs. Uh, the verification of this modeling, here we see a progression that goes together with the fire guard polygons that are integrated in real time with the simulations. This is the ground truth information that we're using to validate the model. Operationally, but I also like to say that in the last two years, we've been lucky to get 1,800 different incidents with real-time observations every 15 and now 10 minutes that are helping us to make an unprecedented evaluation of the Rotherman model and, a, and, a, and improve it on this that is, is going to appear during the new first season with that sunny new model that we're going to create. Um, <clears throat> the wildfire risk forecast provided daily provide a, a region-wide, or in this case, a statewide view of different variables. This is, for example, a fire size potential. This means that at that time of the day, any fire starting there has a potential of 10,000 acres or more without any suppression. Uh, suppression is not included in the modeling, uh, but as you can see, the model includes a spotting and really a strong capabilities in that regard. And there are some other variables also in the forecast helping to inform the units in advance. All this platform is integrated with a, a, an extension of this platform was the integration with tactical analysis. Tactical analysis is in production this first season. Basically, this extends the information coming from the planning, from the RDS tools and advance to a wider audience uh, that are managing the incident. This is a full COP with uh, where you can see the simulations integrated. You can see the tracking of the resources. It provides a full disconnected capabilities for incident mapping uh, and syncing information when it's available through different permissions levels. At the, at the incident scenario and, and, and goes integrated with the team the, with the team at the situation you need to exchange with the with the national uh, feature service for incidents. A critical part also is not only tracking the fire but also tracking the resources in the same scenario. In this example, we see how the uh, engines are tracking real time. We have updates every minute of the engines of Cal Fire, the dosers, and here we have a doser that is the uh, is represented in wildfire analysis in real time, and also it's represented with the alert wildfire cameras, which is a extremely valuable network of more than 1,000 cameras that is covered in the state. Uh, that resource tracking obviously is available in any platform and really contributes to provide situational awareness even in disconnected environments. And because it's it's a, everything that we create in mobile is, is 
heavily focus on providing that disconnected capabilities. Lastly, uh, there's, a, there's been a strong effort of the integration of uh, aerial uh, imagery, aerial videos, um, and through full motion video. So wall analysts can also uh, integrate that information in a in seamless in a for, in this four dimensional environment where you can define what is going on from the camera and in the same GS environment and that can support to adjust uh, the fire observations for better analysis. Okay. Want to go through a little through the yes. fire season summary? So obviously 2020 was a better fire season, I guess we would call that. Yeah. Um, and we had just rolled out this product uh, to all our F bands and to each one of the units. And so we didn't have actually the time to actually do like a full complete training with a lot of them. So a lot of this was done on the fly. All of our F bands uh, adopted this very quickly. And me working at the Sacramento level, I was assisting them uh, with running some of the models because all the work that we did being done by the F bands, they had their hands full with everything that was going on. So I was able to push simulations to them for when they were out in the field. And then I was able to coordinate with them to actually get some more real-time data for fire behavior that was on the ground to calibrate those models together. So we were working very closely together. And that is kind of the similar operation that we are doing now uh, at the units uh, with our RDS-2s. Yeah. Um, with the fire guard polygons, the hotspots, the alert wildfire cameras, the speed of the program, we can calibrate our models very, very quickly and run simulation after simulation after simulation and push that out in the field. Uh, along with all the integrations, the map layers, uh, the F bands have a extraordinary amount of information at their fingertips to answer one off questions and to try to uh, keep all our um, executive and the IC teams um, informed of what's actually going on and for where the fire is going, along with uh, what potentially homes might get impacted. So, with all that information, um, to push that out in the field can be a little bit overwhelming. With the tactical analyst FI response tool, that is a boiled down version that we can actually get digestible information out in the field in real time. Along with that, both these programs push back and forth so they can take pictures and they can push real time information back to the F band to continue that calibration and making sure the models that we are pushing out to them um, are correct. Yeah. This is the numbers of the use of the platform. All the simulations are shared between whoever has the permissions. Uh, it was about, uh, regarding fire, uh, fire cast, more than 40 billion last year, more than 50 billion simulations this year, and about 10,000 incidents every year was uh, were supported with the simulations, and about 33,000 simulations were there. All the simulations are accessible, uh, available. You can search the simulation by user, and also those simulations are accessible to evaluate the performance and to get the feedback that is needed after the first season to say, okay, what do we need to improve our field? What do we need better practices to improve our, our fine knowledge, okay? Also the platform, it provides uh, on, top of the, on top of the tactical, uh, individual dashboards uh, that are uh, reference for the units for planning purposes. In this case, for example, we have the fire size potential for one day at the unit level. This can be, uh, actually this can be uh, synthesize at the uh, unit level in, Cal in the case of Cal Fire, it could be you know the national forest level, dispatch zones, or predictive services area. Just aggregating information for those 150 million simulations, it's easy. And one thing that I will show is that uh, in this graph, we can see how the day with the biggest fire activity in California history that was detected from satellite, that was on the on the on the Labor Day weekend. Uh, that's the green uh, FRP, the fire radiative power coming from the satellites. That was the, the that was when we had the big growth on the North Complex and when we had the August Complex growing. The prediction of the fire cast was uh, was was done like three days in advance. So that's uh, that really proves that the the prediction capabilities in advance are also there. Because of where we are, I would like to show that uh, just a glimpse of this campus that uh, right now actually it's more than 500 users because this, this is not updated. It's a Moodle platform that is a structure following the NWCG formats on courses. Right now we have uh, six, six courses from 101 to 106 till the advanced modeling that were was able to support the training and the deployment of a, with a quite complex system uh, during the COVID fire seasons that we had in the past. Uh, with that, I think that we end our presentation. We're open to questions.
and the simulation is just click and go and we'll grab all the information all the weather station information is there lighting detection from satellites detection from fire guard it's a pretty comprehensive platform and this is the desktop tool yeah there's also a uh, extraordinary amount of map layers that can be involved in this too and so we've had a lot of map layers built into it but we also have a lot of one-off map layers that we can upload ourselves so for example in uh, 2020 one of the big things like during the creek fire was all the beetle kill that we had in the Sierras. So I was able to upload all our maps that we had with the number of trees that were killed to help give some of that resolution to and calibration of those models as they were running through our beetle kill. Yeah. Uh, the other thing too, uh, going back to Firecast, because they were running millions and millions of simulations across the landscape on a three hour, all that stuff, we have massive lightning busts that go through we already have an idea about where those hot spots might be should a lightning strike take place. So we've already done millions of simulations. We can overlay the lightning maps on top of that and actually make our prioritize about which fires we need to actually go to when we have too many fires across the landscape and not enough engines to go to each individual fire. Yeah. Hey, Diane, Diana, I, you want I'm to that we're like? Yeah, you are. Uh, Diane Rao had a question. Yeah, hey, everyone. Good morning. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Oh, excellent. Hey, um, thanks for this presentation. Uh, you know, I I was exposed to some of this stuff. Um, well, it's been a couple of years. I've, I've known about it. But last year, I was oh, working on the question from Diane. Yeah, can you guys hear me? I'm not going to listen to anything. I, I'm wondering if there's a plan to somehow incorporate these types of modeled products for use uh, strategically with federal partners uh, when you're on an interagency incident. So what the important about this program is, we're trying to figure out our audio issues, is that on both sides between TA, FI response, and WFA, um, this is a program they can utilize all the way down to boots on the ground, firefighter level, all the way to our executive and our director to gather up the information that they need in order to make either tactical or strategic decisions um, and to assist them on the fire lines, whether it's trying to do predictions or real-time forecasting. Joaquin, this is an audio check. Can you hear me? One of the other things too, all the weather days are actually stored on a cloud server too. So we can go back to September 9th when we had these hellacious fires back in 2020 and actually replicate those fires or do other modeling on those fires that happened back in the past. So we can also use it as a training tool uh, for people in the field to actually go through and replicate these fires that we had, uh, possibly go through and you know what different strategies might do. Um, we've got the ability to adjust fuel models so we can go through and actually put like non-burnable fuels in and try to replicate those line uh, and potentially see like how we might have also told those fires too. Thank you. If uh, Joaquin and Jeff still aren't able to hear us, we will gather up the questions right. and submit the those chat. to them and see if we can get them to answer them if they can. I think your audio is messed up. Diane is asking a question. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, we can't hear Diane. We're going to hear anything. Let's see if we can connect the audio again. Is this? Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Now I can hear you. Oh my goodness. All right. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Sorry about that. What do we need to go back to? What did we drop off? <laughs> we could hear you guys, the whole, you guys the whole time. We're going to let Diane re ask her question. Diane, would you like to try again? Hello, Diane. Sorry about that. Hey, no problems. Can you guys hear me now? 
We can hear you. Yes. Oh, excellent. He, I, I was, um, you know, I worked on the Dixie Fire for a bit last summer, and I know that uh, this this modeling tool was used to support that incident. But you know, the federal agencies work in a WIFDIS centric world, you know, with the WIFDIS decision making, and 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 you know, unfortunately, the models that are embedded in WIFDIS are used heavily on the federal side of things. So, my question is, when when you're working on incidents uh, cooperatively, interagency incidents, is there a, a plan to or um, are there any plans to share these types of modeling results strategically with federal units to help inform and support their decision making? Like, is there a tech transfer strategy for how to share this stuff? Or is it just yeah. really Cal Fire centric right now? Well, the answer to that is yes and yes. So, on fires where Cal Fire has been embedded, um, we this summer we're working on, um, second, we're working on. Uh, getting our federal counterparts, along with our local government counterparts, access to the tactical analyst tool to get that information to those troops on the ground also. So they're going to be getting temporary accounts. Uh, we've also been working very closely on those same instances last summer to make sure that the LTANs, the FBANs, that may not be CAL FIRE, are also getting that information and uh, being able to push on that side. But they may be printed products or they may be screenshots to be able to push that on that side. Um, obviously, the program isn't based in WIFTIS. However, we can also pull a lot of NFDRS stuff in there, too, for all those things that we need to pull NFDRS from and push that to the feds, too, in a very, very quickly and timely manner. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Just to add, uh, I, I would just like to add that we have a document that really, for whoever wants to use it, because the science in the back is it just enhanced, but it's the same science. So we have a comparison of the different models, the inputs that we're using, and that's uh, openly accessible. We, we share that with the Fire Behavior Committee on WCG. So if any user has to you know, see the results coming from wildfire analysts, really understands what they, they see, and they can trust, and they can understand what there are differences that typically are first because of the data inputs are typically more refined in terms of fuels, in terms of uh, weather, and also in terms of some improvements on the modeling that we have included. But basically, science is kind of the same. One example that we say is that, for example, we have created a full LIDAR-based uh, canopy crown fuels of the whole state that uh, we have tested against the actual land fire product. And it's it's way superior in that regard because it's LIDAR-based, right? And it's uh, updated with LIDAR, LIDAR coming from the last year and with JEDI coming from satellite. But our plan, obviously, I mean, we'll, 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 as a company, we we'll love to be part of the portfolio of tools because we feel that uh, with this, and especially with the FS Pro capabilities, it has, uh, we, we can play a niche, uh, we have a niche or to fill some gaps that, uh, that are on the modeling, because to be honest, it's a way more integrated and advanced platform. I would love to be in the hands of the, uh, our federal partners. Yes, okay, very good, thank you for that. Uh, you know, just from my experience, um, the agency administrators weren't familiar with the tool. Uh, there, you know, we didn't see any sharing of products. A lot of people didn't know about the agreement. And from an, an LTAN perspective, there were already so few of us trying to support the incidents. We were trying hard not to duplicate efforts, uh, you know, running the same, the same, running different models, but on the same piece of ground to answer the same questions. And that that didn't seem like a good use of our time, you know. So I, I'm going to try a little bit better this this summer to try to get on board so that I can see what you guys are seeing and uh, maybe help bridge some of that communication. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Yep, and then just, just on a side note too, the Dixie was a ginormous fire to say the least. And then with multiple teams embedded on different base camps, sometimes that hinders that information flow back and forth, and sometimes that's just making contact with the FBAN that has um, access to this program. Uh, on top of that, uh, we have we are heavily embedded in the GACs also on the CAL FIRE side, and so we share this information with the people at the GAC level too. So if you have a question or an idea that this program can answer, uh, you can also reach out to your GACs to potentially get that information from them. And it's interesting the comment that you did because it, the reality is that they're very little advanced. And I think that with the effort that CALFAR is doing to strengthen the Intel section on ICS with this new RDS role, uh, living in the time that we live in where we have real time information coming from resources real-time information coming from the fire, and modeling that can keep up the pace of the inputs 
that are out there. Uh, our intention was to deliver something that is actionable and it's kind of a supporting, you know, uh, a community, of Evans community that is very small, uh, fortunately, uh, with a extended inter-community that it's growing and it's, it's, it's making good use of these capabilities. And we feel that Tinkal Fire is leading the pace, the pace on, you know, integrating and providing those capabilities to this to this extraordinary fire system that we're living uh, by taking advantage of that. Hey guys, this is Brad. I, I did have one question. Um, oh, sorry. Just talking hey, over ahead. others. I can't type one. Um, yeah, on. another question in the chat. Uh, are there some examples online of predictions versus actual fire perimeters? Yeah, actually. That's well, from we're John going. Kern. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a big thing. Obviously, we're going through. Uh, an intense validation of, uh, as I mentioned, we have the lucky, but the first time I'm sharing the screen of some of the validation, the process that we're going through the 1800 fires uh, that were evaluated from FireGuard. Uh, that's a part of the evaluation where we are uh, first evaluating how the Rothermel model was performing on different grass, grass shrubs, shrubs, and timber little. This graph here is pretty significant because basically the error, this is telling me the number of simulations that are over predicting or under predicting in these different type of fuels or in these different type of wind conditions. And what we can see, we have numbers now to say that timber fires, uh, timber fuels on the Rothamel uh, model, the actual timber fuels that we have are under predicting big time. It's only appropriate when, when they are getting into the, into the uh, including the ground fire, which has some, uh, some improvements also that we're doing, for example, for the Scott and Richard model, we're including a smoothing factor, so it appears before. Uh, but in terms of examples, we have a ton of, this is the mountain view fire, we've gone one by one with the fire guard simulation, the simulation of the fire, sorry, fire guard evaluation, the simulation of the fire, etc. And we've gone through many of them. Uh, so yeah, we have an extensive evaluation, continuous evaluation of the system. Yeah. I know that answered your question. We're preparing a paper for the uh, conference in Pasadena where we'll show the results of the validation and, and yeah. Uh, so we're, we're gonna have a, a paper on that. With, with the fire guard, it has given us a huge wealth of information in near real time about how well the model works and in situations where like timber, for example, where it may not be working due to other conditions, we can calibrate very quickly and change that fuel model to actually make the model run correctly. Uh, Caldor is a perfect example of how quickly we're able to change our fuel models and actually start getting some much, much better simulations that are uh, um, much more representative of what the fire is doing on the ground. Yeah. So yeah, we, we're not uh, only providing the simulation. We're trying to advance a little the science. We know where the gaps are. We know that there are gaps, for example, in the terms of the light full moisture for the herbaceous for the shoulder season. We're tracking that, and we have two models for the light full moisture herbaceous and the woody, machine learning base uh, that are run for the whole California in a gridded base. Uh, where this year we're including a war forecast evaluated with the improved with the with machine learning. Uh, um, another model better for the wind gas. We show the wind ninja. This year we'll have the Warfest Fire, the far coupled model that is developed by San Jose State, Adam Kochansky, Craig Clemens and their team, and Jan Mandel. That will be part of the modeling framework inside Wildfire Analysis. We used to say that we're model agnostic. When we have a better model, we'll use it. And Warfest Fire will be part of that. And we're ending, and this fire season also, we're going to produce a Paracumulonimbus Fire Power Threshold, PFT, product uh, that we hope is going to provide better information about instability and potential uh, convective situations for this far season that will replace uh, the Haynes Index uh, in a seven days product. So a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, Ron again. Can you hear me, Joaquin and Jeff? Yeah. Yes. Oh, good, good. Um, yeah, just there's a couple of questions that, that uh, we were just wondering. 
come the fire season or even in advance, is there a common place where we could start to to get our intel up? Um, I mean, a lot of us use WIFTUS, and that's common in, in the federal system. But when we go to an assignment, just wondering how can we quickly get our intel up? Uh, one innovation this year on the Dixie Fire is they had morning um, intel briefings uh, with key players. But is there anything in the works on that or any suggestions? Well, as we mentioned, I'm going to log in right now on the tactical analyst, the tactical analyst tool that is uh, uh, that is the companion. Oops, let's see if we have it. Uh, can show. Uh, I don't know. Probably that is the place that we could immediately on an incident get information about an incident and anything that is produced from an FBAN or from the Intel section can be shared at the incident level uh, on the different incidents in a way more accessible way. So think about tactical like a uh, like a cop that is incident centric and that has uh, Intel capabilities on it. Like for example, in this Philip fire, uh, we have all the mapping, uh, all the mapping has to be provided from the field or from the integrated with the NIFC GIS data set, but also the simulations are accessible very easily uh, from the same place. So it's, uh, I say that getting access to tactical when you go to an incident, that's where you have everything that could be published there. And obviously everything that we create can be shared or published through the typical GIS standards, right? So back to your Intel question. So having those Intel meetings is absolutely imperative as we move forward to make sure that we're all on the same page. With our COP, it also keeps everyone on the same page in near real time. So as soon as um, NIROPS, Courtney Aviation, MQ-9 information gets published about where that fire line perimeter is. Once it gets uploaded to the NIFC server, everyone can see that information in there once it gets uploaded. So it keeps everybody on that same page as we keep moving forward on this. Well, that's great. I think just the technical analyst and the same page concepts moving forward will be excellent. And uh, with that, we're about at the half hour. Is there any other thoughts that uh, Jeff or would Joaquin want to add or any other questions? Uh, one of the other things too, on this tactical analyst tool, because it can work in an offline and a connected environment. Um, if you give this to like our HFEOs, our, sorry, dozer operators and our crews, they can be dropping points, lines and polygons as they're actually creating line two. Mm -hmm. And that's all getting fed back to the situation unit leader. So all of a sudden now we can start updating our lines on top of everything else. So we can have that updated map it's getting pushed out in the field, so people are looking at um, the most current information, not just what got published at four o'clock in the morning to be ready by seven o'clock for the briefing. Yeah, I'm showing an example that a picture that was taken here where we are right now, <laughs> this down, down here. But yeah, that's critical. We try to provide that one pager file that I showed uh, on the simulation that comes from the dispatch, as I mentioned, that goes to the unit in the field. The unit on the field can give back. Uh, a picture of what's going on, uh, some mapping initially, and when so when the in, in incident transitions to extended attack, the same flow can appear, but in this case at the division level. So they can provide that photos, where the fire is, where the operations are, uh, in a very robust uh, tool that can work connected and disconnected, and that is following all the you know auditing process, so that information is so is shared appropriately at the incident level and connected to the national standards. Thanks much. And I saw the last question was simply great presentation and uh, really appreciate it.